going? Come on. There we go. Hey, everybody. This is Adam Broad of Liberate Sonos Republic High coming to you from the Voluntary Virtues Network. Yeah, it's been kind of fucked up today. Uh, last couple of days, I've just gotten off a 16-hour shift after a 12-hour shift with an ear infection, uh, which is the back end of the bullshit I had last week. So, Fucking yeah, bullshit. It's been great, I know. And I am joined by the sexy, I would argue the sexiest cryptocurrency man alive. His name is Randall Parker Jr. If you don't know him by now, what the fuck is wrong with you? Get out there. Go and follow Future Media Management. Go and follow uh, the the Crypto Talk Hour, uh, which actually premieres uh, his next episode after my show goes up uh, tomorrow. So check that out, and we'll get the time on that here in a bit. And he also does Rose to Liberty on Fridays. If you're not watching those two shows, again, you're fucked up in the head. Go do it. Watch it now. Actually, stop this video real quick. Watch his last two episodes, then come back here, and then we'll be good to go. Then you'll be caught up on what you need to know. So... Uh, today we've just got a few things we're going to talk about, mostly how we get uh, to the free society. Uh, but I guess I'll just open the floor to you, Randall. Um, anything you want to pregame? Anything you want to let the audience know? Anything you want to plug? Fire away. No, I just think it's a it's a great topic, and I uh, appreciate being invited on here to talk about it because Bit Nation, like we're going to get into, I know a little bit later, is a kind of like I guess for our audience might be we'll, we'll get maybe cover over the. Uh, topography some of these words a little better but basically uh it's almost like the first version of a dro and like i'm sure you're familiar with the, the phrase dro right yes sir yeah so i guess we could just explain it for other people real quick all right we'll we'll kind of dive into that portion as soon as we get to that kind of oh, okay get to that well, halfway through i don't want to lose people but it's kind of uh, like yeah so it's it's essentially a, a court type system uh but but it raises the question <laughs> yeah. of how do we replace government? Yeah. And so the the real here's the big question that we always get asked. You know, I'll talk to people, and you know, especially at my hotel that I work at, I'll just hang out and we'll talk about a free society, the non-aggression principle, uh, how the state is evil, blah blah blah. Insert epic anarchist talking point here, because you know we're good at that shit. We're good at getting people rallied behind the idea of liberty. Right. But the first two questions that come out of their mouth: What about the roads? And how do we get there from here? Uh, which, you know, yeah. liberty, and how do we get to there? And yeah. the one I've never been able to answer is how do we get there? And that's right. such a great question. And that's one of the things I think is such a hot topic in the anarchist community. But at the same time, it also is oddly not covered. I mean, we see everybody talking about how we shouldn't use the state ever, but isn't anything that goes towards the goal of liberty worthwhile, as Rothbard says? You know, even if you're not running for governor or running for any kind of position, which is probably a bad idea to begin with, Here, but getting behind legislation, you know, well, what's our best course of action? How do we get to a free society? What do you think, Randall? Here, here, what I would say is, like, you can't have this objective statement of what is best for liberty. So, for example, like, take the Scotland situation. We covered this a little bit on Roads to Liberty the past two weeks. If you, like, our first episode, we were looking at, like, oh, this would be a great thing for liberty to, to set a, a precedent for worldwide secession movements all around the all around the globe, and then Scotland didn't secede, and everyone kind of looked at it, I think, initially, like, uh, the, the gut reaction is to look at it as a failure, but I actually heard um, a gentleman interviewed on Adam Kokesh's podcast, the Freedom uh, Podcast, whatever it's called, and he presented a, a way of showing how the seceding uh, opportunity would have possibly been a lot less free of a lifestyle for the average citizen in Scotland. It might have resulted in higher taxes or greater economic penalties for opting out of the UK. So, yeah, what might seem like, oh, a great move for liberty through legislation, removing a law or even take legalization of marijuana, you know, on the face of it, someone who smokes or enjoys it or who wants to sell it, they can open a legitimate business. It might feel great, but now you're still asking permission. You still have to go seek permission from your overlord to do your business. So how far did you really go, you know? Right, and when you factor in the extra taxes, and that just got me thinking about the whole Scotland thing, uh, you know, you almost would have to start off with obnoxiously high taxes just to get the government even started. So... They're already shooting themselves in the foot and chopping off their left arm all at once uh, if they were to go and secede, which <laughs> it's kind of one of those love-hate relationships. We would have loved it if it would have happened. We would have hated it at the same time. It's really one of those no-win kind of gray areas, in a way of speaking, just because there's still a state involved. Now, if they were to have gone and broken off and been a complete free society, I'd be all like, 
we're gonna go there. Um, that that's gonna be fun. Let's let's start walking, guys. Let's get in our paddle boats and <laughs> boat our way over there. Um, and I hope to talk to Jeff Berwick uh, sometime in the next month or so about the whole Galt's gut and little Galt's Gulch thing and how that all went down. Um, but we know that that was unfortunately a failure, which apparently is a big boon to the libertarian movement. I don't think it is. I think it was an experiment that just failed. And what is the free market but experiments that fail? You know, I see. Yeah, the other thing it. I would say, the other thing I'd say too for your audience to consider is that like you can achieve freedom in your lifetime. Like this is a crazy thing I found out. I've been on the road traveling for the past two or three months, and it really depends on your situation. If you have um, a certain type of lifestyle and you're, you're required to live in a certain area, your your wife or your spouse or your whatever is in school or whatever, and you can't leave. Uh, your family has your family obligations, whatever the case may be, fine. But if you choose to live a certain lifestyle of, you know, maybe being more migratory, vagrantory, um, learning trades, being willing to do more manual labor, or just work bars, work restaurants, do whatever, um, I've found so far just by having an affable and outgoing personality, everywhere we go, uh, the person I'm traveling with, you know, uh, some of you guys know Sarah from a previous episode of Rose Liberty, but we. Uh, we seem to meet friends everywhere and meet opportunities and have people want us to move in their house and be a roommate or whatever. And uh, a lot of this stuff is cash. You know, a lot of this stuff is off the books, no lease agreements, no background checks, just, hey, you look like a nice person. We hung out for a few times. Let's let's see where it goes. And if it doesn't work out, we can move on and, and you know, uh, bartering and stuff like that. So there's little communes, so to speak. That's a touchy word, but there's little enclaves, so to speak, in, around the world. And... I even have some friends on the left side of, of uh, anarchy that I'm civil with and I talk to, and you know I have no problem with them having a commune in this little patch of the woods or wherever in their own society they buy 600 acres and they want to live a certain way. Great. They can use all the resources on that land, and in terms of the relationships outside of that, they want to barter, and as long as it's peaceful, it's great. You know. So I think the idea of having liberty and then having a flag and having a constitution and having a military and having one state currency and having anything re resembling that you uh, you're misusing the word liberty I think oh for sure for sure so I guess are we completely ruling out uh, using any form of the state to break itself down uh, or is that a kind of a long-term kind of incremental way while we figure out our own way through the free market what do you think I think the state, by trying to manipulate the free market and trying to uh, Im impose um, Keynesian type of economical uh, policies on the people, like printing money and you know fractional reserve banking and uh, you know enforcing petrodollar type, basically that's why there's so many military, so much military presence in the Middle East, not just to keep uh, a, a, a control of the region and to continue to continue to dest uh, destabilize the re region, but also to prop up the dollar. If it weren't for the petrodollar, the dollar would collapse. So the short answer is, um, the Reader's Digest version, version is that the dollar will collapse unless the violence can continue. Once the world says, okay, enough already, enough of you blowing shit up, America, we're, we're over it now, you gotta stop, the dollar w will crumble because these nations will say, great, they're out of here now, we can start trading our oil for gold or Russian, cr uh, you know, you can trade it for any currency, but right now it's pegged to the dollar, and that will seriously dump the dollar down. And you'll see gotcha. silver and gold, you'll see Bitcoin, you'll see those going up. So. Right, and I've been kind of following a little bit of Bitcoin news. I know there's been a few more additions to places that accept Bitcoin. Uh, do you happen to know a partial list of that offhand? Oh, yeah, big-time stuff. So Braintree was bought out by PayPal last year. They built a service that is going to allow merchant acceptance of Bitcoin for any PayPal merchant. Um, so it's not fully rolled out yet, but it's limitedly rolled out. There's something like 30,000 new merchants now accepting Bitcoin through the PayPal network. Okay, that's huge. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. If it's not fully on board yet, it'll be on board probably by the time anybody sees this. But, it, they, yeah, they've been putting on a lot of press, and uh, it... In theory, uh, pretty soon you'll be able to buy something on eBay and pay with Bitcoin. Oh, and what's revolutionary about that is, let's say um, you wanted to order some 
stickers that said something on them like F this or F that and you were going to stick them in various places and you wouldn't want them to know who ordered those stickers for whatever reason. You know, you're making some sort of prank or something, I don't know. Something I'm sure harmless, but you could <laughs> order them with Bitcoin and mail them to yourself even and if someone were to say, hey, well, it was sent to your address, say, of course, but I'd never seen them before. I didn't, I'd never ordered that. Like, someone must have used my address. There's no payment <laughs> record. It's not done through your credit card. Um, there's no IP address linked to it. You can do it through Tor. You can go to eBay on Tor. If you guys don't know, just look up Tor Project on Google and download the browser and surf the web anonymously. But, yeah, I think basically the state will crumble because the Internet and uh, Austrian economics will will kind of take out its little... It's propped up by toothpicks, essentially. The state's teetering over. Right, and, you know... And this has been one of the fun experiences of working in a hotel that only occasionally gets kids involved. We had a kid who came down to the front desk uh, not too long ago, uh, late at night, and I was like, hey, how you doing? And I showed him all the candy and the ice creams, and he was like, well, I don't have any money, but can I give you this? And he gave me a little toy car, and I was like, I'll fucking take it. Well, let, get your candy, kid, and get out of here. <laughs> I'll yeah. take the little car. And then I gave it back to him the next day just because I didn't want to keep it. So, I mean, that right. was just fucking awesome. The kids understand that they want to give something up and they'll get something in return. You know, right. the candy or the, the ice cream has more value to them than the car does. Uh, since he didn't mm -hmm. have any money, he just bartered with me. I thought that was freaking brilliant. And I don't get to see that very often because we got, you know, people coming in with, you know, million dollar limit credit cards and, you know, $7,000 in cash running around. Those nut jobs staying here for three months, crazy people. Uh, and I think I think it, it brings us to a greater point that like we already have anarchy. If you think about it, we already like the state is doing what it's doing. There are the, uh, a gang of thieves, but when whenever you have a party and you say everyone bring something, you bring the chips, you bring the beer, you bring uh, you know some pork chops. Guess what? That's anarchy. You're not keeping receipts. You're not divvying out 13 percent. Oh, I have a corporation shareholders. No, it's just that's all. Exchange value for value, be voluntary, be peaceful, anarchy. Well, and oh just God. like Stefan Molyneux says uh, in a, throughout the entire book of everyday anarchy, I mean, we spend most of our childhood in anarchic play. We spend most of our, our days not involving ourselves in the state. <laughs> sure, we may run across the government roads, but that's about it. We go to school, but... <clears throat> Sorry, guys. When we run home and go outside to play and not do our homework... We're an anarchy, not just because the chaos of not doing our homework, which eventually right. leads to bad things, but <laughs> you know we're we're in a state of anarchy all the time, you know, and and we are currently right now in a state of anarchy. You're giving up your valuable time, and I'm giving up my rest time because you know, fuck it, I've got a show to do, and I love the beautiful people that watch my show. All and because three, and because four, we're giving it away for we're giving it away for free, quote unquote. There's no tax on it because I'm not charging you an appearance fee to be on your show, and you're not paying me a royalty to be here, and uh, we're not sharing any ad revenue. We're just on the show together today, share, right. spreading liberty. So they can't right. tax it, and it's just voluntary. So it's cool. Exactly. So we alluded to it here at the beginning. Uh, first, let's talk about what DROs are. They're dispute resolution organizations. Uh, it's essentially an anarchic version of, uh, of a court system. I would work the exact same way, except for the fact it would be, oh no, for profit. Oh my god, it's so fucking evil. Anything that's for profit that's got anything to do with the law or anything with, with, with upholding contracts, that can't be good, right? Um, actually, it can be fantastic because they'll yeah. only get business if they're the most fair group out there. Right. Because uh, when you put a profit mo motive to it, if everybody realizes that Judge A over here only convicts men of crimes, and Judge B over here only convicts women of crimes, neither one of them are going to get fucking business from the other sex, so they're already cutting their revenue opportunities in half. Right. These companies aren't stupid. They're not you know, brain dead like the politicians are. You know, They understand what it takes to survive, and they will do whatever means necessary to make sure they stay in the market. Yeah, and, and I, just to flesh that out a little bit, like, if you were going into business as a man with a woman and you saw she was employing the, the dispute resolution organization that had the only woman friendly judge, you'd say, hey, I don't want to do business with you because I know you have, you work, you're you allied with that DRO and that judge is going to rake me through the coals if anything goes slightly awry. So 
can we find right. a more unbiased one that has a record of, you know, and there's there's independent organizations that would crop up that would be ratings bureaus that would be paid uh, by the consumers based on you know like a membership fee to to you know and only ones that had good accurate unbiased information. The news would become incentive based again. The news would have to cater to. You can't in a free society the businesses wouldn't have the disproportionate amount of money. The people would have a disproportionate amount of money. Savings would be incentivized because of deflation. If you had a free market on currency, which is what Bitcoin proposes, to where you might be holding on to Adam Coin because you like watching Liberate, Liberate the Republic and you want to be able to advertise on a show so you can exchange Adam Coin and that's a better deal than holding dollars and he gives you a discount that way. And then you might have a little Road to Liberty coin to market on my show and whatever. This new roadway of, uh, of economics and technology is really going to make the state like uh, a, a carriage pulled by a mule. It's going to make it this outdated technology that people will laugh at. Like, oh, you're using a flip phone? That's cute. Like, <laughs> uh, you're going to a government court? That's funny. All right, cool. Enjoy that. Get the fuck out. We'll see you never, uh, essentially. Yeah. Well, um, people want to do business with you, and they say, well, how are we going to handle our disputes? And you go, what do you mean, through the government? And you're like, no, <laughs> fuck that. I'm not doing that. I use BitNation, or I use XYZ, or whatever. Yeah, I mean, they could be the most efficient business person in the world, but if they're using the state, uh-uh. I will go to somebody over there who doesn't know what they're doing yet. <laughs> I'll take yeah. that risk, because I don't need the state to hold my hand and baby me every step of the way. Uh, so It is funny, though. Um, I was listening to a couple people in the liberty movement already, so to speak. Um, Stephanie Murphy from Free Talk Live and from um, uh, Let's Talk Bitcoin. She was kind of pretty much talking out against BitNation and saying, like, you know, what do we need to get a free market version of the government? Like, we want to leave the state and then have, like, because it's like a, it offers a bit marriage and bit divorces and contract disputes and this, that, the third insurance. She's like, well, what if you don't want that? And I'm like, that's the point, though. It's still voluntary. It's not like you have to join it, you know? Right, exactly. I mean, it may be the most popular thing, and you may be kind of a social pariah and considered stupid if you don't join it, but... And that's the beautiful thing, too. What is marriage? It is a, fundamentally, if you take religion completely out of the equation, it is a definition of two or more people, uh, how they define their relationship. Mm -hmm. I don't think you really need a contract for that, but where you do want it, you don't want the state lording it over you. You don't want to pay a $35 fee to the state to say, oh, you're married. Uh, and now I personally wouldn't even go to a bit nation thing for a marriage contract because, you know... It's it's our thing. It's you know if for some reason you and I got married for some, you know neither one of us are that way. But hey, why the hell not? In a free society, anything could happen, right? Dude, you never know. You never know. Might be fun. <laughs> exactly. We can chop our dicks off and just get married, and we'll be like Ken dolls. We'll just hang out, and people think we're <laughs> gay, but we'll never touch each other. It won't be weird. We'll just get the tax benefits. It'll it'll be straight. Oh, we we'll still have our dicks, but we just won't use them. We'll just make believe we don't. We'll be <laughs> heterosexually gay married together. <laughs> There's a movie about that. I forget what it was called. It had Adam Sandler in it. Let's look into that. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> I forget what it was called. That's, that'd be one of those kind of funny things. But They did it for tax benefits or whatever. Yeah, but it's, it's one of those fun things that Bit Nation is giving you so many opportunities. They're doing contracts. They're doing uh, wills, marriages, divorces. Uh, they're even starting to work on insurance from what I understand. A quick glance at the website. They're doing yeah. stuff with law. I mean, they're taking everything that everybody ever worries about, except for the roads, because fuck the roads. We don't need roads where we're going. Um, now, nah, dude, I can handle roads, too, if you want. I'll tackle roads for you. All right. Sounds good. We can work with that. But it's, it's, it's just one of those really cool things that this Bit Nation thing, you know, the whole anarchy society, the whole anarchist movement has been just dying to get a hold of something that would compete with the government. And this has come along. It's, you know, dropped like manna from heaven into our laps, and well, you know, people just, were very smart to get behind it. Let me just fill in the blanks too for people a little bit because, like, for those of you who aren't that familiar with Bitcoin and why this is special, like, oh, you just stapled Bitcoin to a government and took away the borders and called it BitNation. It's more than that. Like, that's that's just I don't know, like maybe half of what it is. But Bitcoin is a decentralized network of record keeping. So. It's everywhere, and it can't be taken down. It's not in one building. It's not in this building in this state where someone can go in and get a court order and seize it and shut down Bitcoin. So just like that, 
BitNation and every other Bitcoin project that's coming out, for example, there's one called Gems. It's like a messaging app, but it's end-to-end -end encrypted, and you can actually own it. So the Gems coin itself is worth advertising on the network, and you can advertise, but you can just hang on to them, and as the value of advertising there goes up, those coins go up in value. So if it's like you own, instead of owning, not owning like a, a, a network, you can be a part of it and own a part of it just by using it, be an early adopter. So crypto is like doing all that. And with with BitNation, with other things, it's it's to where you have a contract with someone, it's not something that you have to trust this other party now and say, okay, well, I'm trusting the government of the United States or the government of Panama or Spain to to hold that contract between us and interpret it the right way. You lay it all out, it's just in a record. BitNation is just there to uh, to validate it or to secure it, and there's a lot of things it can do. There's a lot of things it can do in terms of insurance contracts. So if you buy life insurance and the company goes out of business, you're screwed. If you buy life insurance on the blockchain and you send in X amount of money, it could be in a open source, cryptographically protected insurance investment fund that just is tied to Bitcoin. So you put an X amount of Bitcoin every week, in the year 2015 it shoots out whatever amount of money back to you, or 2025 or whatever you wanted to do, um, with options, with, if it's all technologically, you have, you know, well-known programmers that vetted it and can look at the code. So it's just a, a level of transparency you'll never get with the state. Ever. Right, and we're, we're getting to the point now where, first of all, technology is just so cheap. I mean, this phone right here, the LG Optimus G, I mean, it's like less than 100 bucks to buy one of these things. This phone is powerful right. enough to run these kind of programs, to run uh, these kind of widgets and, and, and have these wallets and carry around Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, whatever other coins are out there. And sure. you can have the whole world in your fucking pocket. You know, does that not blow anyone's fucking mind? I mean, how did we get from where we are to here in, in so short a time? I remember six years ago, I had a goddamn flip phone. And I thought it was the greatest thing ever. It had internet, it had a, an MLB app, which made me really happy. But that's yep. shit and child's play compared to this kind of thing. And people are out there bending iPhone 6s just for fun, so, you know. Right. For you, humanity, you assholes. Um, <laughs> right. But, you know, we've come so far, and to see something that is just jumping light years ahead, it's just exciting to see. And I've, I've never seen anything like it, and I hope we see more like it uh, in the very near future. So, you know, I, I'm really excited with what it can offer. Uh, and if you guys haven't seen it just yet, go to bitnation.co. I'll put the link in the description bar below. Uh, I think there's like, what, 12 days left on it before it launches, uh, before you can start crowdsourcing it, or I, I think. I don't remember. Yeah, it's so it's in days. 12 days. Yeah, in 12 days, I think uh, somewhere in, in October, they're going to start the crowdfunding, which I think is running for 30 or 60 days. So you can go to whatever exchange or whatever site and send Bitcoin, and then it'll send you back. Um, or create a wallet, or I don't know exactly how they're doing it, but that's any kind of coin. Usually, when they launch, it's something like that, where you there's a time frame where you can get in for a certain rate, and then after that, it goes to the market, and usually it either jumps up or it slowly creeps down. If the coin tapers off, and there's no interest in that product or that service, the market shows, hey, we're kind of all losing interest, and then that project dies off, and everyone right. in it loses his money. But some of them go triple, quadruple, ten times over, and they're still a success today. So. Right, right, and it's, you know, I plan on trying to get involved as much as I can. I mean, I'm on a tight budget, but I'm sure I could squeeze 50 bucks into it just for fun. I mean, you know, why not? What's the worst that can happen? I mean, I'll probably spend I've, that $50 on burgers later anyway, so. I've scored on a few. While. I've lost on a few, but I've scored on a few. So yeah. I think I'm up in the long haul, but, you know. <clears throat> it's always good to take risks. Well, I kind of just want to open the floor up to you, Randall. Is there anything that's been on your mind today? Is there... Any kind of news stories that's really hit your attention? Anything uh, that you aren't going to cover in your upcoming shows this week? Yeah, I mean, have you been following this stuff in uh, Hong Kong, the Occupy Central stuff? I saw a headline on the newspaper when I picked it up from our, our guys at 5 a.m. this morning, but I haven't really looked at it since. Uh, what's going on with that? It's basically an Occupy situation. I don't know exactly all the details. I know it's uh, it's in... Uh, Hong Kong and in other areas of like Asia and, like I guess like in China and it has to do with like democracy I think there's some communist regions or whatever or more socialist regions that are fighting for more democracy 
So I guess it's kind of like these half halfway getting it type of folks, but they're, I think the expression is correct, that they're expressing that they want more autonomy and more control of their lives. And so, oh, and then another thing is I met this dude at my girlfriend's job, and he is a guy that was born in the UK, and he's lived in the United States for 25 years, and I was like asking him, which do you like better, Europe or America? And he's like, America. But not everywhere in America, but certain places in America he likes better. And But he said, like, he was telling me all about Europe, and I, it made me want to go there. So I feel like it's really... He's from there, so he has a nostalgia to be in the States and all that. And he'll pay a little bit more in taxes, and he'll get a little bit less from his government and feel a little bit... Because he's above board. I'm not saying I'm below board, but if I don't want to report taxes, or I think that's immoral. He's willing to... Oh, 30%, 40% of my, my, net, my earnings. Like, he'll be a slave. I don't want it. I want to work for tax or Bitcoin. Dude, I work for Bitcoin. I work for uh, cash as much as I can. I have no problem admitting it. Right, yeah, no, that's that's frankly the best way to go. That way you have something physically in your hand or in your pocket that you can go and turn around and exchange right away uh, for something of actual value, uh, which is kind of why I hate currently having a, a, a job like I do. They know how much you make, though. They know exactly how much you earn because they know you clocked in from this time to that time and you made X amount of dollars and you took it yeah. and put it in that bank or you have direct deposit. They're watching you. I, I remember when I used to work, I work at dealerships. I used to sell cars. I don't care if I made a big check. I'd still go, damn it. They know I made that money. Like They're watching me. Like I'm, I, yeah. Bitcoin they can't keep track of. They, they could try. They have a lot of crazy computers and shit, but it's too hard for them, man. It's too crazy. There's too many coins. And that's why I love being able to be tipped at my job, too. I've, uh, I've made a rather large sum of money since I started a year ago. Uh, I should say, if I were to report the amount that I actually earned in tips, uh, I probably would have owed the government about... Don't uh, say a number. Listen, I'll tell you what. When you say amount. rather large, it's rather large to you could be 10 bucks. Rather large could be 10000 Who knows? You know what I mean? And we'll just leave the shroud of mystery there, anybody who wants yeah. to know. Uh, hey, man. Ask me, and we'll see what happens. We'll see if I tell you. We'll see if the NSA... Private message. Yeah, yeah, private message. Over the Tor network, uh, or we'll just... Yell really, really loud from across the country because you know we have supersonic hearing like that. Anarchists know where each other are. I can't wait till something like BitNation does catch on, whether it takes four or five years, to where people are like, uh, "Yeah, I want you to, uh, you know, at make an addition onto my house. You want a contracting company? I say, Adam, I'm gonna hire you. I need you to sign these contracts through BitNation. I need you to create an account. Um, I need you to log into it every single day and you know put in your reports, your updates, and how, how your progress is going, and take photos and upload them to the blockchain. And you're like, all right, man, I'll do it for the job. You're paying me ten thousand bucks. I'll do it. Yep. And see that catch on, and see the government like not being used. Like we have a dispute, and like we just go to BitNation, we go to a private building, and or we Skype in, and we dispute it, and I get forty percent or whatever. We work it out, and the government's like, uh, yeah. you didn't go to us, and we're like, yeah, fuck you. We don't want you. We don't need your opinion. Yeah. We worked it out. Exactly, and. Yeah, it, we had a situation. Um, there was uh, a friend of mine. I'll kind of just put it that way, keep it as anonymous as possible. Who uh, was having some issues with their significant other, and uh, they were gonna immediately just jump to the state. And I was like, "Oh, wait, 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 wait! Before you go and destroy both your guys' financial lives here, right? Isn't there a pastor or uh, a private mediator you could go to? Isn't there some way you could work it out? Go on a camping trip? Go to a this place over here, that place over there. Isn't there yeah, something they need to, to both, work it out? They need to both go camping somewhere and take some Molly, take some MDMA, some uh, ecstasy or some mushrooms or something, and get naked, sing, whatever. <laughs> really fall in love and realize, like, I'm not saying I tri- I don't have a trip in year. I haven't tripped in like six years because I, I, mean, I did that in my early 20s. But that's a true thing. If you listen to a lot of people that have studied this, like like gurus and stuff, if you can, if you're willing to face the fear of doing that, because it is a little intense to, to do and undertake, it's like it could be six hours of an experience. But yeah, you don't walk away the same person. You expand your your perception of the world, and I think doing it with another person, that relationship becomes a thousand times. Like I did it with best friends, and like the bond was so strong. Like for the years and years after that, I was just like that that dude even would be like my bro. Like I'd be like because I remember <laughs> we were tripping together, and it was chill. But yeah, I would tell people to not just go right for some something with a state, especially. Like, you want to break up, break up, and make a little agreement and write it on a napkin and move on. But and the the moral of the story is uh, this happened about a month or two ago. Uh, they just finished celebrating their three year marriage anniversary uh, two days ago. 
Uh, so they figured it out. They actually went to a local pastor, worked it all out, sorted it all out. Good. Uh, they they got their faith in line, whatever you want that to mean. Uh, That's and, fine. They you know, agree great. The same stuff. Fantastic. And I was like, awesome. You know, and she came in, she had a smile on her face, and she was all happy, and you know, there was no sadness anymore. And you know, just seeing the two of them interact, they're even closer than ever. Good. And you know, maybe they wouldn't have worked out. Who knows? And maybe it would have failed. Who knows? And you know, that would have been just fine too. It would have destroyed the both of them. But at least it would have been private. At least they would have knocked it out. No state involvement. And I feel like that's just a little moral victory here. Uh, I I kept somebody from going straight to the state. Uh, I'm not some kind of superhero. I just said a few words. And you know, if you had that kind of relationship with people, where you could influence even just a small part of their lives. That's the way to go, man. Just go and, and influence people and show love to people and show them you don't need the state to do everything for you. That's that's the moral of anarchy, really. I mean, let's be honest. Screw the non-aggression principle. Just don't be a fucking douchebag and, and show people love. What could right. be better than that? Yeah, people get so wrapped up in one thing, and it, it's it's kind of a little more than that. It's it's all it's, it's too easy to instill down. I mean, the non-aggression principle is so important to understand. It is 101. It's the first week of class in anarchy school, but still, it's not the only thing you need to know. There's more to it. So, right. You don't even have to be uh, someone who even knows about the non-aggression principle correct. to be an anarchist. Uh, That's true. But we're, we're starting to run a little bit low on time now, so no doubt. Yeah, I want to open the floor up to you. So what do we got coming on tap for your shows uh, next uh, for the Crypto Talk Hour and this Friday? Any kind of guests, anything? Uh, what do you want my viewers to check out? Uh, actually, I'll tell you right now. Um, this thing is great, man. It's called Gems. I'm joining this uh, from a peripheral standpoint. Uh, I'm helping out marketing this behind the scenes, but this is a crypto project that I can really get behind. I was starting to talk about it before. It's like WhatsApp Messenger. Just got mm -hmm. bought out by Facebook, but for $19 billion, the users <laughs> didn't see a share of that. They didn't see a hairy penny of that. If I told you, Adam, I have a social networking app or a messaging app that is encrypted end-to-end. -end. You can send photos, you can send text, you can send voice over it, send video over it, and it's encrypted. And if you want to buy into it a little bit, you don't have to pay for it. It's free. But if you want to put 20 or 50 bucks and get some coins, they're called Gems Coins. If this thing goes anywhere, those are going to go up in value big time. They can quadruple. They can go up 10 times, 100 times in value. It might be of you if you think the app is good and you want to tell your friends about it. You get paid a little bit for your investment in believing in this project and that money that you invest goes towards developing the app further and marketing it further so this is the new crowdsourcing of a project so anyone in your audience can go to gem, getgems.org and uh, find out about it find out when the crowd sale is taking place it's about two months from now so a lot of time to research it and ask people and um, we'll be covering it on, on both of my shows a little bit because I'm, I'm going to be helping push this because this is like the first big app that's going to come out that isn't going to be bought out by anybody, and as it goes right. up in value, the people that use it are going to get paid. It's going to be cool. It's so. going to be. It's basically going to be Vine meets Snapchat meets Instagram meets WhatsApp on steroids with a cryptocurrency. <laughs> that sounds pretty close, man. Yeah, <laughs> getgems.org. Uh, people become aware of it, study it a little bit, and uh, you can hit me up at um, uh, CryptoVVN on Twitter and. Uh, I could have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with anybody if they want to know more. Or I'm not a, you know, I can't give you investment advice, but I can give you my own dumb opinion, and you can make whatever <laughs> decision you want to make. <laughs> right, but right. I personally, uh, full disclosure, probably will be uh, investing in it monetarily and also just time-wise and and uh, passion-wise for it because it's. I think it's going somewhere. I think it's gonna be something good. Right, and there's there's nothing wrong with admitting that. I mean, that's if I had the wherewithal to get behind some of that kind of stuff, I probably would. But I kind of just record my shows, go to sleep. Record my shows, play Minecraft on Libertarian Gaming Server. Hey, Which, don't by forget. the way, if you all haven't gotten on that yeah. yet, talk to the people at LibertarianGaming.org. Chuck and I just built our – well, I built the house for Chuck because he's a lazy piece of shit. Um, and mm. we're setting up a shop in there. We're not sure what we're going to sell yet, but it's going to be awesome. Dude, uh, the guys are having so much fun. I'll join in there too, man. I just gotta get some damn time. I'm so freaking busy, but I'll join. I'll drop in there too. I love Minecraft. Yeah, hell yeah. It's it's just so much fun. So make sure to check that out. Uh, plug plug all your links. Plug all your shows, your podcast, your blog. Go. Uh, yeah. Road to Liberty Fridays, 8 p.m. Eastern time on Voluntary Virtues. Just go to uh, youtubecom forward slash Voluntary Virtues uh, Network. Right. Yep. Yes. YouTube.com slash Voluntary Virtues. I'm sorry. 
Because the other one is up. voluntary zero virtues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, don't confuse people. Fun. Just voluntary yeah. virtues. Or I have a website, roads to liberty dot com, roads t o liberty dot com, and I I uh, aggregate all my episodes and even some of the episodes of like shows I'm on, like this show, or whatever. I'll I'll post it on there to mm-hmm. let my audience know like where the conversation is going, not to like follow me and be my fan, like just. If I'm talking about something on one thing and then it ties into something else, that way you can get more information and find out about Adam's show and all that stuff too. So, And again, if you're not yeah. following Randall, again, what the fuck is wrong with you? Just go do it. I'll put all of his links in the description bar below. Again, check out both of his shows this week and check him out from the week before and the week before that and the week before that and the month before that, uh, and especially when we launched because that was a kick-ass show. Uh, and we'll have some awesome content coming for you guys hopefully soon. I'll be talking with Michael Shanklin about a somewhat similar issue about how do we get to anarchy from here. I'm going to end eventually be talking with Father Hollywood. Uh, he's a Lutheran minister who is into Austrian economics. You don't see that shit very often in the church, so uh, that is upcoming later this year, um, talking back and forth with him. Uh, it's about the most exciting thing I have to offer at the moment. Uh, I am now going to go eat some, crash, and then play some Minecraft. I've been up for way too damn long. I've worked 28 out of the last 36 hours, so, yeah, I'm fucking done. <laughs> damn, so, dude. That's we it. will catch you later, Randall. This has been a blast, and this will be Adam Brat of Liberation for Public Eye signing off saying peace and love and liberty, and go play some Minecraft, go have sex, whatever makes you happy, and please get involved with Bitcoin or some kind of cryptocurrency. Just do it, have some fun, and we'll catch you next week.